Hello everyone. Welcome back to Analog Snippets. Temperature sensors are important components of modern chips. They are widely used for thermal shutdown, to regulate cooling fans in microprocessor chips, and as one of the PVT monitors in dynamic voltage and frequency scaling techniques. These temperature sensors are also known as smart temperature sensors. Here, smart only means that the output of temperature sensor is digital output. In this video, I will discuss the most commonly used circuit techniques to design these temperature sensors. All smart temperature sensors are made of two parts, the sense part and the measurement part. Most low accuracy temperature sensors use voltage across diode or a BJT as temperature sensor. Most high accuracy thermal sensors use delta VBE as temperature sensor. This delta VBE is same as the one used in band gap circuits. Measurement usually means analog to digital conversion. Most low accuracy temperature sensors use Nyquist rate analog to digital converters. Examples of such converters are SAR ADC or dual slope ADCs. Most high accuracy temperature sensors almost always use oversample or delta sigma ADCs. Okay, now let's go in each of these in some more details. Voltage across a diode biased at a constant current has a CTAT characteristic. Here, CTAT stands for complementary to absolute temperature. Keep in mind that complementary is not same as inversely proportional. While inversely proportional is 1 over x function, the complementary function is a constant minus x. Also note that we are specifically mentioning absolute temperature here, which means a temperature on Kelvin scale. Now if we plot the diode voltage with absolute temperature, it will look like this. At 0 Kelvin, this voltage would be about 1.2 volt. And from there, as temperature increases, this voltage reduces with the slope of about minus 2 millivolt per Kelvin. With this slope, by the time we reach the room temperature of 300 Kelvin or 27 degrees Celsius, this voltage is reduced to half to 0 0.6 volts. Temperature sensors use this temperature dependent diode voltage to measure the temperature. Let's assume an operational temperature range from minus 40 degrees to 125 degrees Celsius. At minus 40 degrees Celsius temperature, diode voltage would be about 730 millivolts. And at 125 degrees Celsius temperature, diode voltage would be about 400 millivolt. So in between these two limits, we have a measurement range of about 300 millivolts. All these comments are also true for VBE of a BJT. As I mentioned before, diode is used in low accuracy temperature sensors. The primary reason is that the diode voltage is a process dependent parameter, accounting for all sources of error, which include errors in current, diode and the ADCs. An untrimmed temperature sensor can have accuracy as bad as plus minus 10 degrees Celsius. With one point temperature calibration, accuracy can be improved to plus minus 5 degrees Celsius. Here, one point trimming refers to trimming at one temperature. With two or multi point trimming, accuracy can be improved to 2 degrees Celsius or better. Let's now look at delta VBE as temperature sensor. Let's consider two sets of BJTs biased at similar currents. One BJT has a single device while the other has n devices connected in parallel. Voltage across parallel device will be smaller than the voltage across single device. And this difference in VBE voltage is known as delta VBE. This delta VBE is given by a well-known equation. Delta VBE is equal to Kt over Q ln n. Here K is voltman constant, Q is charge of the electron and T is absolute temperature. Ln stands for natural logarithm and n is the ratio between these two BJTs. So, if we ignore the mismatch between the BJTs, it is a constant along with the K and the Q. And as a result, delta VBE is directly proportional to absolute temperature T. This type of voltage is known as PTAT or proportional to absolute temperature. From this equation, you can see why it is used in high accuracy temperature sensors. K and Q are fundamental constants and N is the ratio of two similar devices. So there is no process dependence here and this value can be made very accurate. Delta VBE is zero at absolute zero temperature. And from there it increases with a slope K over Q ln N. And here is one problem. This slope is very small. If we put the values of K and Q, it turns out to be 86 micro multiplied by ln N. A typical value of N is 16. 
So after putting this value, we get about 239 microvolt per Kelvin. Notice that this slope is about 10 times smaller than the slope of a diode voltage. With this slope, the voltage difference between minus 40 degrees Celsius and 125 degrees Celsius is about 30 millivolt. So we need amplification with this type of sense. Another minor problem is that this voltage is not ground referred as was the case with the diode voltage. But this problem can easily be solved by differential sensing. With high accuracy ADCs and one point temperature trimming, this type of sense can give temperature accuracies better than 2 degrees Celsius. Some people have also reported accuracies better than 1 degree Celsius. Let's now move to measurement system. With diode voltage as sense, we need an ADC to convert this voltage into bits. And with minimum distance manipulation, we can directly get a temperature value. Let's try to estimate what number of bits are needed for this conversion. Let's say our measurement range is minus 40 degree Celsius to 125 degree Celsius. But as untrimmed temperature sensor accuracy can be plus or minus 10 degrees Celsius, we need to account for this inaccuracy in our error budget. So let's say our total ADC output range is minus 55 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. Let's also say that for the ease of interpretation, we want a precision of 1 degree Celsius per bit. This means that we want to have one digital word for each integer value of temperature. This means we need 206 unique digital values to represent this temperature range. Now we know that with 7 bit we can have 128 unique values. So 7 bits are clearly not sufficient. With 8 bits we can have 256 unique values. So 8 bits is more than enough for us. On the top of it, each bit change needs to represent 2 millivolt change in the voltage. And your input voltage is in the range of 400 to 700 millivolt. So if your ADC measures voltage between 0 volt to 1 volt for example, then with these specs, you probably need 9 bits. Again, keep in mind that 2 millivolt per Kelvin slope is just a rule of thumb. In modern technologies, actual values actually can be lower, as low as 1.5 millivolt per degree Celsius. So keeping all these constraints in mind, it's fair to say you would need about 8 to 10 bit ADC. Now if your accuracy requirements are moderate, say 5 degrees Celsius accuracy, and you are not particularly concerned about this kind of precision, then you can also use an ADC with smaller number of output bits. In my experience, I have seen 6 to 7 bits of ADCs being used in such use cases. Ok, let's now consider a measurement system for a high accuracy temperature sensor. Before discussing the measurement system, let's comment on the signal bandwidth of a temperature measurement. In most cases, temperature measurements are low bandwidth system. And that means that die temperature changes slowly. It takes hundreds of microseconds or even milliseconds to change temperature appreciably. So signal bandwidth would be hundreds of hertz or at most few kilohertz. But at the same time, we may require high level of accuracy from the measurement system. And it is especially true for sub 1 degree Celsius accurate temperature sensors. And these two are just perfect conditions to use an oversampled ADC. Oversampled ADCs trade measurement time for the measurement accuracy. While in Nyquist ADCs, the sampling frequency should be at least twice as high as the input frequency. In oversampled ADCs, the sampling frequency is much higher. Oversampling ratio or OSR defines the ratio between the sampling frequency and the Nyquist frequency. High accuracy temperature sensors frequently use OSR as high as 64 or even 128. Oversampled ADCs used in temperature measurements are also noise shaping ADCs. These kind of ADCs are known as Sigma Delta ADCs. Sigma Delta ADCs are frequently used in audio applications, which are also comparatively low bandwidth systems. But Sigma Delta ADCs used in measurement applications are little different from the audio Sigma Delta ADCs. They are very similar in their structure and the circuit design. But while audio ADCs are run continuously, measurement ADCs are reset after each measurement. Another difference is that offset is not a big concern for the audio ADCs while it is very important in measurement ADCs. And for these reasons, measurement ADCs are given a different name. Measurement ADCs are known as incremental sigma delta ADCs. Sigma delta ADCs are big topic on its own right, so I'll not attempt to describe it in this video. 
I will only mention that a sub 1 degree Celsius accurate temperature sensor will require 12 to 14 bit ADC. Another important consideration for high accuracy temperature sensor with single point calibration is offset. So let's elaborate on that a bit more. As we mentioned earlier that if we extend the VBE curve to the 0 Kelvin, the voltage value is about 1.2 volts. This voltage is almost a constant for a given technology. And that means that if there are process variations in the BJT, it is the slope that changes, not this point. And for this region, this 0 Kelvin point is known as pivot point. So you can see that this characteristic has just one degree of freedom. And so theoretically, if we trim it at any one temperature, that should be sufficient. The reason why it is not sufficient is the offset in the measurement system. Offset causes this whole curve to shift up or down. And hence, it adds one more degree of freedom. And that is the reason that in presence of offset, single point calibration does not result in a very high accuracy. The upshot is that if there is no offset, then we can do with just single point calibration. And for this reason, all high accuracy thermal sensors use several offset cancellation techniques. Again, offset cancellation is a big topic and I don't intend to discuss it in this video. I want to finish this video with the reasons why multipoint temperature calibration is such an undesirable feature. When we do mass trimming of production part, we try to trim several devices at once using automated test equipments. Before trimming, the temperature of test environment is stabilized to a high accuracy. High accuracy is important because any error in this temperature will add to the accuracy of temperature sensor. But because temperature stabilization takes time, it adds several minutes to the test program. Compare this time with the actual time spent in the trimming itself, which is of the order of milliseconds. And for this reason, multipoint temperature calibration is a big addition to the production cost. And for this very reason, even the initial testing of any high accuracy temperature sensor is very time consuming. Imagine stabilizing several test temperature to the high accuracy. Okay, so I hope this video has given you a fair idea of a temperature sensor design. I will elaborate on some of the topics in more details in future videos. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.